Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Arias and today we're going to be going through Nano Explorer's five-year plan in depth and I'll give you my take on where that will put the company. Let's get right into it. It's been exactly two years to the day since I last talked about Nano Explorer on the channel. So let me remind you what exactly they do. Nano Explorer is a Canadian-based graphene and graphene-derived product manufacturer. They have about 40% of the graphene market according to ID Tech X, and also claim to be the lowest cost graphene producer in the world. Graphene has been called a wonder material due to its outstanding material properties. It's been shown to be pound for pound 200 times stronger than steel, the best conductor we know of, as well as being light and flexible. Nano Explorer is led by CEO Dr. Sharush Nanzapur. Sharush owns about 7% of the company and is one of the owner operator founders that I like to see in charge of the businesses I own. He also got his doctorate degree in nanotechnology and is a deeply technical executive, which I am also biased towards. As of March 2023, Nano Explorer was at a revenue run rate of $125 million per year with 4,000 tons of graphene production capacity. Currently, their main application for their graphene is in plastics, both lightweighting and enhancing recyclability and performance. Future applications that we will get into on the slides to come are related to battery anode materials and to other industrial materials like concrete and drilling fluids. I'll also mention that in August of 2021, they were the first graphene company to receive an EPA approval for their graphene black product. It's a multi-year process to get an approval like this, and it may serve as some barrier to entry going forward. Now that you know what Nano Explorer does, let's jump into their five-year plan that they laid out last year. They plan to 5x their capacity from 4,000 tons of graphene per year to 20,000 tons per year. They plan to spread this over three investment avenues, graphene batting materials, lightweight and composites, and specialty compounds, and we'll break each of these down in the next few slides. This is all in addition to their plans to their battery production plan, which I'll break down after the five-year plan. Overall, I like the plan. It lays out the future for a company to work towards. Of course, as an investor, I wish it were longer term and as always, more aggressive, but it's a good start and it will be important for them to execute their plan to earn investors' trust. First of the three large investments that they will be making is in battery materials. They plan to commission a plant in 2025 that will eventually have capacity for 12,000 tons per year of graphene production and 100 to 200 tons per year of graphene silicone anode material. One thing that stands out to me is there's a wide range from 100 to 200 tons per year and it indicates to me that they are very early in developing this process and do not yet know what it will yield. They are projecting 100 million in CapEx for 100 million in potential annual revenue, which is more than a decent return on their investment at normal gross margins. Batteries and battery materials are a huge and growing market as there will only be more electrification in the future and thus is a great business to get into. However, I would like more information on how their anode compares to others performance-wise. In their presentation, they state that their anode has enhanced capacity versus other anodes and enhanced connectivity resulting in faster charging, which are both attributes that should make their anode ultra competitive in the market. But to know how competitive it will be, we'll need numbers to compare to other anodes. We'll get some of these numbers from the battery portions of their slides, but it's tough to know if these are directly translatable to their anode material. Another factor to consider is if they will have enough capacity to convince buyers to line up long-term deals with them. If not, that may be an issue consistently finding people to sell their product to. But if the starting capacity is enough, they should have plenty of room to scale up the plant much further. Next up is lightweighting composites, which is also slated for commissioning in 2025. The facility will have the capacity to produce 10 million pounds per year of sheet molding compound, bringing their total capacity to 12 million pounds, a six times increase. They plan to spend 50 million on the new plant and think it will add 80 million in annual revenue. As an engineer, designing a vehicle, you're almost always trying to get weight out, as lightweighting improves performance in a variety of different ways. If this material will help you do that, it's a no-brainer for the engineers to use, with the only question becoming one of cost. I know their SMC is already in use on vehicles today, like the F-150, which indicates costs aren't exuberant, and I will look to see more adoption over the coming years. Additional factors helping us here is that they have made many small acquisitions in plastic molding companies that will help this portion of the business gain further adoption. Last of the three investments of the five-year plan is to produce 4,000 tons more per year of graphene for use in specialty compounds. Construction of this plant isn't slated to begin until 2025 and is planned to be commissioned in 2026. They plan on investing $20 million in CapEx for potential annual revenue of $40 million, another great investment. In their presentation, they referenced four different specialty compounds that this additional capacity will be used in creating. First is concrete, which the addition of graphene can lower carbon emissions, provide cost savings, and increase performance and durability. If all these benefits can be had with no drawbacks in the usability of the material, then I would expect mass adoption once this capacity is online. And with such a massive market like that of concrete, that can only mean good things for Nano Explorer. 
Next up is for the use of graphene in drilling fluids, which can increase drilling speeds, extend tool life, and reduce fluid loss. Again, if all of these things are true without drawbacks and without massive cost increases, adoption should follow. Next is polyurethane foam, which can be used as insulation in housing, where adding graphene can increase insulation and flame retardancy, as well as increase recyclability. Finally is polyethylene and polypropylene, where the addition of graphene increases performance and recyclability, as well as results in cost savings. All of these appear to be attractive markets to enter, especially those that result in both performance benefits and cost savings, which is where adoption becomes a simple case to make. Another large portion of the proposed future is their venture into batteries with Volta Explore. Volta Explore started as a 50-50 joint venture with Martin Rea, but was bought out completely by Nano Explore in the beginning of this year for a little less than $10 million in Nano Explore stock. I have not seen any reasoning as to why this is from either company, but I would guess Martin Rea lost faith in the project, but Nano Explore wanted to continue, which admittedly isn't a great sign. Volta Explorer has commissioned a 2 megawatt hour demonstration plant and is now starting to work on building a 2 gigawatt hour facility that will expand to a 10 gigawatt hour facility once fully ramped. The current plan is to commission the 2 gigawatt hour plant in mid-2026, but this has already been delayed at least once and because making batteries is so difficult, I wouldn't be surprised to see it delayed again. Here they specified some of the key performance indicators from the batteries off the pilot line. Feel free to pause it if you want to go through each one in depth, but the most important to me were the 10% increase in energy density, which increases range or decreases cost, a roughly 10% lower internal resistance, which increases charging speed and is safer, and a huge 33% increase in cycle life. However, they are missing the most important metric, cost. They are projecting to be able to make these for $150 per kilowatt hour when making 2 gigawatt hours per year, and reducing those costs to $110 per kilowatt hour when making 10 gigawatt hours per year. This isn't really cost competitive with others in the industry, or more accurately, it won't be cost competitive when they get in production in 2026. I think it's still likely they'll be able to sell their cells, but I do not see this being a massive value driver for the company, unless certain extreme battery constraints materialize. The revenue implications are pretty huge, and if they're even selling half of their 2 gigawatt hour capacity at cost in 2026, that would be 150 million in revenue. The same calculation for half of capacity at cost in 2028 once the plant is closer to fully ramped would translate to $550 million in revenue and could push closer to a billion if they get higher utilization. However, because their production costs are so high, I do not see it generating much profit and therefore value for investors. Let's move into my simple financial case for Nano Explorer. They are currently at a graphene run rate of 4,000 tons per year. They are planning to roughly 5x that capacity in less than 5 years, which is an impressive rate of growth. They estimate a potential increase in annual revenue of roughly $220 million from this expanded capacity, which is on top of their current run rate, which would be 2027 revenue of $345 million, a compound annual growth rate of 22% in the intervening years. Recently, they have shown some discipline with regard to the cost, as they have halved their loss year over year last quarter, while revenue grew only 11%. While I'm thinking of how to value Nano in the future, I want to take a rather conservative stance on how well they fulfill their future plans. For the simple model, we'll assume that they are utilizing three quarters of their new capacity expansion on top of their existing run rate, that gross margins stay flat at about 20%, and that expenses grow at 10% per year. That would yield a little less than 50 million in 2027 EBITDA. If you assume a slightly above average 25 price to earnings ratio, that I think is reasonable due to Nano Explorer's market position, that would yield a 2027 valuation of 1.2 billion, which would be a substantial 22 to 28% CAGR from now to then. I think this is a reasonable model, but it's very sensitive to its inputs, especially gross margin. If this falls, as management has suggested it might, it would severely hurt the resulting valuation and growth rate. One final thing to keep in mind, as a commenter pointed out on my old Nano Explorer video, is their dilution. Here's the charted over the past five years in the blue, and the year over year change is in the orange. As you can see, a few years ago, the dilution was pretty brutal, but it's since calmed down. This by no means should be considered to be gone, as they have not flipped to consistent profitability and investors should keep this in mind and build it into their valuations going forward. Finally, I do not own any Nano Explorer, and here's why. I just need more specifics on what exactly their technology can do and what's holding them back from mass adoption. With regard to using graphene as an additive in concrete or plastics, how much does it cost? What performance boost does it provide? Can the extra strength lead to less material used and account for the added cost? They have indicated it can, but by how much? Is it a 1% benefit or more? The degree to which the added cost is offset by increased performance will influence the speed of adoption greatly. I'd also like a window into what's the current limiting factor. Is it supply or adoption and demand? 
If it's supply, why aren't they expanding faster? If it's adoption and demand, why is that so slow to come along if the benefits are so clear? With the battery business, do they have a path to getting cost competitive with current battery manufacturers? I certainly could be wrong, but I don't see it without them hitting a significantly larger scale, and I don't see them investing fast enough to keep up on their own with others that are already at scale. So while Nano Explorer has a massive opportunity ahead of it, using graphene to improve the performance of many different materials in many applications, I won't be buying any at this time because of the lack of technical details to show how superior the product is, and because I have not yet seen mass adoption that would indicate that their product is indeed superior. I will still continue to cover the company from time to time, so subscribe for more content on Nano Explorer. And if you've made it this far, check out my first video on them as the first link in the description. Leave any video suggestions and feedback in the comments below. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.